Hello, this is going to be about shading. I got a request on YouTube from a nice gentleman. Um, it was regarding how does Frank Rosetta, how does he shade? Well, I got this cool uh, book, a photocopy actually from a book. My friend gave this to me. This has a lot of his pencil sketching. So as I observed Frazetta's shading, the light's traveling this way, right? Everything's going to be dark on the left. But if you look at the way he's shading, it's very specific and selective. At times, you know, everybody wants to have a logical response and be like, oh, everything's shaded for a reason everything's there sometimes and sometimes some things just might be there because it's cool you know like i mean one of the things about shading is that nothing is ever pitch black right but that's pitch black but again like present a very logical person and there's a reason why he does everything a rhyme and reason why he does everything right and we look at the light source here clearly hitting this guy's back right and we see how that consi how that is consistent over here, and you see the light hitting here. But really, what we got to look at is not so much like, oh, this is the light source and where it's coming from. I mean, I think what I want to get to the bottom of, how the hell is he even doing it? Like, how does he know to, like, how does he know that's the right amount of shade, right? How is he doing this? Well, we got to ask ourselves. You know, who was his foundation? Who did he look at? You know, I mean, I look at this arm, you know, where he decided to put shadows and why. I look at this book, which is the book that he learned from, the Bridgman book. And if you look at this book and the way this particular artist drew, he drew like if things were sculpted, right? So let's let's go to some hands or arm studies and help us look at things a little differently. It's gonna help me understand how Frank was being selective about his shading and how he was even going about it. So if you look at this guy's sensibility and the way he drew, everything feels sculpted. Right? Everything feels like it's a mechanical thing. He uses a lot of planes. Everything feels constructive. Nothing feels like a bunch of wobbly pieces of art. I mean, look, he has another book called The Human Machine. I, I love that title because, you know, I mean, look at what this is titled, Wedging, Wedging Passing and Locking. It's very logical, and the body is uh, exactly what this is. It, it feels like wedging. It feels like we're this machine-like thing. And if you look at the way he's drawing, it's very sculptural. You look at it here too. Look at the planes. Look how he's drawing that. So when I first saw this arm, I was like, man, that looks uh that looks like a sculpture. And then if you look at that arm, that's not too far off from what Bridgman was doing, this artist. Look at that arm. Just look at that piece right there and look at that right there. Look at where he's selecting and being. I mean, it's very interesting. So Frank, he drew and he thought in sculptures. His stuff looks very dimensional. I mean, it's very easy to, to look at an arm, right, and do something like this. Give me a second. So let's draw this arm. Let's shade. Oh, let me get another piece of paper. Give me a second. Okay. 
Let's draw that arm. Let's shade some stuff. Where did my pen go? Where did my pen go? It's all right. I'll use another pen. Okay. See if we can zoom in a bit. Okay. everyone can see. Let me see. Zoom in a little bit more. All right. So that's arm one. Let's do another arm. Like jacking this up here because I want everyone to see Frank's Frank's drawing of his arm right here. Okay, I'll draw the other arm. It'll be the same arm. I just want to give two different examples of the way he thought. Uh, now, this is my opinion of the way he thought. You know, I don't know. I've never asked the guy. I could only assume. And where my assumptions are coming from? They're coming from the stuff he studied. And I believe, you know, like, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. All right. Basic shapes. Okay. So let's, let's look at this thing. One might be inclined to shade this thing if the light's hitting here. Right? Simple, right? Just simple shading. By following some really basic core um, foundations about shading, right? Which is, if I had a circle, right? And if the light was hitting over here, right? We'd have a core where it's really dark, right? And in here, it would kind of get lighter. And as it reaches this point here, it doesn't ever really get dark, right? And notice that I am not going to completely make that part dark. There's still going to be a little bit of light, no matter what, right? Let's say that's a table or whatever, right? So I'm following pretty much, oops, you guys can see. So what I'm doing is I'm pretty much following the same rules here. I apologize for the autofocus there. I'm following the same rules here, right? Where like, this is dark. There's still a little bit of light here, just a little bit. give it better believability, right? Okay. Well, that's one way of going about it. Another way is to look at this arm and look at it like a geometrical thing. And this is what I mean. If we were to examine an arm, right? This is the forearm. And then we'll have a rectangle here, right? And 
And then we're going to have a tube here, a tube there, right? Where am I getting these shapes from? From this, right? Okay. I'll just leave that right there and look at it. Okay. And then I'm going to do this. So, see that? Okay, now, see this area here? We're going to put that right here, okay? So we're looking at it like it's a geometrical shape. This thing here that comes out here. Okay. All right. Now look at that little curve right there. You see that little thing right there? I'm going to put it right here. Now I'm looking at everything like it was a sculpture, right? Tubes and cylinders onto each other. I'm going to get this gray marker, okay? This is what I'm going to do. Get a dramatic and bold here. So what am I exactly trying to say here? Frank, not geometrical, man. You know, he's not in... Just like that one, that artist I was just showing you, like he, he, everything looked like a bunch of tubes and stuff, which helped me understand the way he was shading. Because after breaking the arm down this way and, and it, you know, geometrical shapes, that's exactly what he's doing. Now he's being a lot looser about it because obviously you don't want to be drawing the mechanical man, right? We're not drawing robots here. I mean, this is very robotic, but helps me understand why it looks like this, right? And it looks very organic. So that, so look at the two arms that I drew here, right? Very uh, not really influenced geometric, you know, with, with the geometry, you know, it's like in, in masses, right? I mean, it, it obviously shows that I, I know a little bit, you know, but this is way more specific, right? So what I'm going to do is, this is more instinctual, I think, whatever. I'm going to draw this one with this knowledge underneath it, right? So let's do it. And I'm sorry if I'm vague. I'm sorry if I don't make any sense. I'm not perfect, everyone. I'm, I'm like, I'm this weird artist guy, and I admire Frank's work, and I'm trying my best to share what I understand when I look at his work. And this is just all assumptions. I have no clue. This is my best guess. All right, so let's do this. So I'm hoping that now that I did this breakdown on this arm here, you know why. You know, I'm making a little shadow lines and because I have the geometrical shape behind. Well, I have it like in, in the back of my mind. I'm pretty much describing all these little squares without all these little squares. And I think that's how Frazetta drew this. I think. Um, I'm pretty positive evidence shows in all his work, everything feels sculptural. So that's a big difference here between like that, right? This feels very soft. Yes, very logical. Yes, following the rules. But here it's like I am taking into consideration of the human machine 
of these shapes. Another example of something like this, this is a very good book that I have. Damn, here's the pen I was looking for. This is called The Alice of Human Anatomy. The Alice of Human Anatomy for the artist Stephen Roger Peck. This is like one of the greatest books I've ever owned. And he did a drawing of that. And it was really cool because then I was like, oh, his knowledge of anatomy is beautiful. Um, and I want to share this drawing he did of a forearm that helped me understand um, what Frazetta was doing and what that other guy, Bridgman, was doing. Give me a second. I highly recommend this book. This is a great book. Yeah, so let me show you guys here. Look at that. This is exactly what, in my opinion, what Frazetta was doing and what that other guy, Bridgman, was doing. And you can see the subtleties here. You know, you see it here. It's like, that's the extreme. You know, that's him giving more, you know, not, not being so, like, mechanical about it. And look at how organic you can make something look. But as I look at this, I can see the influences from this because he understands that. And look at that. He makes something like this complex of a hand. And look, it's all the same principles. So what am I trying to say? I believe if you learn the planes, if you learn to draw things that mechanical, it will help you understand where to start shading. Um, yeah, look at this one. This is great. Look at that. Look at you see the influence here. So he's not just shading for n no reason or you know, he's he's they're actually describing shapes. So I'll I'll do a couple of examples. Um you know that reinforces what I'm saying about this approach. But let's look at more of Frazetta's work. That dude's a monster. Look at that. Beautiful. What I like about Frank's work is he puts a lot of straight, you know, a lot of, like, I mean, it, it, there's a lot of curves, yes, but there is a lot of straight lines. That's cool. Awesome. Look at that. Anyway, let's look at this guy's work. Let's see what he was doing with arms. Yeah, look at that. So simple. I thought there was a sign, like a crazy science behind um, shading, and there is, there there is. But you can also make it simple on yourself, you know, and and um, learn the planes, and you know. Shade that. So here's an example, right? So I'll, I'll do one here of a face. Okay. Oh yeah. Let's shade that thing. You know, the light's hitting here, right?
So I'm a big believer. I mean, it just helps me understand, like, looking at the face like this helps helps me simplify, like, how, how to shade. So, okay. Now let's just draw a person, right? Okay, now it's time to shade this thing. All right, using what I understand about that, right? Light going through here. All right. Now, you see this here? This, to me, it feels like a little box, right? A little square. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to lightly describe it. All that right there, you can totally tell, right? Like that's from understanding that. All right. Now let's get that little blending stump thing. That's how I think. See more stuff here. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Y'all can see that. These things in planes.
Look at that. Look at that. This helps me understand what he was thinking when he was shading this face. Look at eyes deep inside there. That's cool. Look at that. You know? So, I love these studies here. Look at. But at least we know, like, what he was doing in those previous drawings. Like, I was drawing very sculptural. And I understand, like, why he left some shadows here out because of the intensity of the light. Look at that. Rosetta drew this way. Subtle, you know, obviously. I mean, look at how this artist thought. He thought this way as well, but his end result was looking like that. That's really it, right? It's not, I wouldn't call it hiding your tracks. It's just, you know, that's, that's how they saw things. And, you know, it, 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 it helps you understand shading a little bit better, you know? It gives a better rhyme and reason. All right, well, I hope I was helpful. Sorry if I did a bad job articulating what was you know, about this shading thing, but you know, honestly, a lot of this stuff is hard, and I'm hoping that my demos and my drawings definitely answered some questions. I appreciate feedback. I appreciate people asking questions. I, I love to share what I what I understand, what I what I think, how I think I see things, and. If you guys want to make videos, you guys want to link them to me, what you guys also think, that would be awesome. I'm very open to learning and feels good sharing with others and answering questions. I was wondering, maybe I can share a couple of more things. I wanted to talk about maybe this book here, the Stephen Roger Peck book why I looked at it so much. This book is almost like a diary. And um, what appealed to me is how well he understood the skull. Like I'm looking at the orbitals and I'm looking at all this detail. I'm like, how do you understand so much? How was he able to turn things and draw things very seamlessly? And look at these examples. Everything was in like, you know, look how logical, look how, like everything felt sculptural. The same with what Bridgman was doing. So I'm able to see that and see, oh, that's how he's doing it. You almost, you almost need a mechanical pass to make things look organic. Look how appealing that looks. It feels very educated. You know, he's not just doing stuff because it feels right. Of course, that's what you want your end results to feel like, but you also want some logic. I mean, it's very appealing. I mean, look at that. We know where that shadow's coming from. We know what that thing is because of how simple he understands it. Look at that. This method really appealed to me, and so I did it a lot. And as I was learning it, I started to see that it's all over Frank's work. So I studied this over the years, and there are things about designing here, like particularly the legs, that I like to share. And he gets into the shapes of the bones. And he draws the anatomy on top. In a second. Look how sculptural that torso feels. I, I like how he does that drawing here on the side. This is the foundation here, and this to me is the, the valuable part of it. It's understanding this equals drawing like that. Look.
And you know that thing about core lighting, what I was saying, and there's always like a little white space. Look at that. There's it right there. All right, legs. Here we go. I like the shapes that he draws here, how he's breaking down the leg and how it connects to the pelvis and to the bones. Look at that. Little breakthrough. Look at that. Simple shapes and designs. Look at that. Some teardrops. It's one of the most ultimate anatomy books that I own. Draws the fat on the knees. Steven Roger Peck. This guy's great. Let's look at his figure drawing. This guy wasn't a comic book artist or anything. I think he was, I'm not quite sure what he was actually. I know very little about him, but what I do know is how well he understood the figure and I admire his studies and the way he broke things down. But I look, I, I, I look for his little sketches. Give me a second, they're here somewhere. Here we go. I like these little sketches because what they do is they actually surface what he truly, truly understands. You know? And I see, he knows design, but look at that. It's cool, you can feel the weight on these things. I'm not quite sure what he was actually after. You know, Frank was after some dynamic poses. He had strong shapes. I'm not quite sure what was his subject matter. But when he draws, man, when he draws out just that arm. I hope you guys can see that. That's some hardcore stuff right there. Simple drawing, but you know, you cannot escape what you what you understand. You know, you understand it, you understand it. Okay, well, I hope I was helpful.